Did you know that if you get 1% better at something each day for a year, you will end up 37 times better by the end of the year. Welcome back to my 24,907 incredible students. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, okay? And the main idea behind this book is that sometimes a big improvement to your life begins with a small change. Here's the plan for today. We'll be looking at key lessons from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. We'll be learning English as we go with our deep work technique. First, a quick read of the text, then a vocab breakdown, then going back to the text for a deep dive. And also, as we go about today's lesson, we will think about how to apply what we've learned to our English studies so that we can study English more effectively. If all of that sounds good to you guys, be sure to click like on this video and let's dive right in to the lesson. Lesson one from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear is make it obvious. Creating clear cues for your habits makes them easier to adopt. By designing your environment to promote positive behaviors, you increase the likelihood of sticking to new habits. Now, an example of this lesson might be that Sarah placed her English vocabulary flashcards on her desk. Why? To remind herself to review them every day. Lesson two from the book is make it attractive. Habits are easier to adopt when they are appealing. Pairing new habits with activities you enjoy can make them more enticing. For example, I turn on Chinese subtitles when I watch YouTube videos to make studying Chinese more fun. Principle three or lesson three is make it easy. Simplifying habits reduces friction, making them easier to start and maintain. Break down habits into small, manageable steps to encourage consistency. For example, Maria set a goal to learn just one new English word each day, making the task easy and manageable. Coming to lesson four, we have make it satisfying. Rewarding yourself for completing habits reinforces positive behavior. Immediate rewards can motivate you to stick to your new habits. An example might be Tom treated himself to a favorite snack after completing his daily English reading practice. Lesson five from the book is focus on systems, not goals. Building effective systems ensures long-term success. Instead of fixating on the end goal, concentrate on the process and the habits that will lead to achieving your objectives. An example of this might be Emma focused on practicing English for 20 minutes each day rather than aiming to become fluent in six months. Up next, we have the two-minute rule. Starting with a habit that takes only two minutes to complete can help you overcome resistance and build momentum. This rule encourages you to begin even the smallest version of the habit. David started his English writing practice by jotting down a two-minute journal entry each evening. Finally, we come to principle or lesson seven, the last one, habit stacking. Linking a new habit to an existing one helps create a routine. Habit stacking leverages your current habits to establish new ones. For example, Lisa decided to review her English vocabulary right after brushing her teeth each night. Now, if that felt a little bit challenging, a little bit too hard, if there were some words you didn't quite get, if you feel like you're missing something, then don't worry, because for the rest of this video, we are going to explain all of that text that we just looked at and make it 
clear. Make it make sense. But before we do that, please take one second to support me as your YouTube English teacher. Click like on this video, comment how many years you have been learning English, and watch until the end for the best results. All right, let's keep going. Jumping into the vocabulary breakdown, the first word I want to talk about is Q. Q. Yeah, Q. Simply put, it means a signal for someone to do something. In this context, in the text that we read today, here's the way we're thinking about this word, a reminder to start a habit, a cue to do something, a reminder to do something. You know, some synonyms, some similar words might be a signal or a prompt, okay? These three things mean basically the same thing. It means it's a sign, a signal, a prompt, a reminder. Here's another one that you need to do something, okay? So, in the text, what did we see? We saw placing her vocabulary flashcards on the desk served as a cue to study English. Okay, this is a great example, and it ties in to the text. It is related to the text that we are reading today, right? So this woman, she is looking for something to help remind her to study English. So what does she do? She takes her vocabulary flashcards and she places them on her desk, okay? She puts them in a visible spot, right? A visible spot, a spot where they can be seen easily. Now doing this serves as a cue. That's how we use this word. We can say that something serves as a cue or it is a cue to do something, okay? Now, for the girl in this example, uh, placing her vocab flashcards on her desk, that serves as a cue to study English. So that's her reminder to study English. That's her prompt to study English. That's a signal she gives herself to remember to study English. You guys know that I am a visual learner. I love to draw. I love to doodle. What I'm going to do for this illustration is just very quickly draw a simple picture to help me remember this word Q. Okay, we've got a guy driving a car. He sees that the light turns green. It turns green, okay? Let's shade in this one, shade it in to show us that it's green. When he sees that the light is green, he knows that's his cue to go. That's his reminder to start driving. That's his signal to get going. That's a prompt to get him to start moving, okay? Now, if you are a channel member and you're following along with this lesson at home, you can draw this picture or uh, a similar picture that helps you remember this word in your own way. Go ahead. Our next word is friction. Friction, yeah, what does that mean? Well, pushback when rubbing against something in a very literal sense. Yes, that's what this word means. For example, if my hands are rubbing together, pushing against each other, then there's going to be some friction, right? The harder I push, the harder I push them together, the, the more difficult it is to slide them back and forth, right? If I'm barely touching them, I can slide them back and forth very easily, right? But if I add pressure, if I add force, then it becomes hard to slide them back and forth. That difficulty, that resistance is friction, okay? So we can also understand friction as being obstacles or forces that slow you down. Or maybe we could say get in your way get in your way. So resistance, difficulty, you're trying to do something, you are met with friction. You are met with friction. 
Um, yeah, that just means that uh, uh, completing this task, doing this thing is difficult. There is something that's holding you back. So let's take a look at this uh, example from the text. Simplifying habits reduces friction, making them easier to maintain. So basically, if you make your habits simpler, if you make them less complicated, then the friction is reduced. The friction goes down. And as a result of that, this makes them easier to maintain. Maintain, what does that mean? That just means it's easier to keep going, right? It's easier to keep doing them, okay? So if there's less friction, it's easier to do. And how do we get less friction? We make the habits simpler, right? If you are making a habit too complicated, too difficult, then there is going to be a lot of, yes, difficulty, resistance. It's going to feel like there's an obstacle, something blocking your path. You're going to feel like a force is slowing you down. You are going to feel a lot of friction. Okay, now just as a very simple example, here's me walking in my room, right? And I'm trying to get over to my desk to study. You know, here's a piece of paper and a pencil on my desk. And we can see on the floor are like dirty clothes and maybe like, uh, you know, here's a Lego set I was working on. Here's a video game. There's all sorts of junk. There's all sorts of garbage. There's a big mess all over my floor, right? And all of this stuff, what is it really? If I'm trying to accomplish a goal, this stuff is friction. It is getting in the way of me accomplishing my goal. So we can say that it is creating friction, okay? If I were to clean up this big mess, that would reduce the friction, okay? the It would reduce the friction, it would lower the friction, and this would make it easier for me to accomplish my goal, for me to carry out my task and complete my goal. You guys know that I love idioms, and one thing I wanted to talk about that's related to this text that we're looking at today is build momentum. Build momentum. What does that mean? Well, to increase speed or strength in order to continue successfully, to get stronger or faster, to keep going, in order to keep going. So one easy way to think about momentum Okay, let's say we have a hill. Oh, you know what? I'll just go ahead and do the illustration now. Okay, imagine that we've got a rock at the top of the hill. Okay, when the rock first begins to roll, there's not a lot of momentum. It's rolling slowly at first. Okay, but then it picks up speed, picks up speed, picks up speed. We can also say that it picks up momentum. Okay, momentum, it builds momentum or picks up momentum or increases momentum. The speed, the strength, the power, the force that it contains is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So gain speed, right? Increase drive. Drive is kind of another way of thinking about speed or the force of going, okay? Now, we also have some antonyms for this uh, example, for this idiom, some opposite words. So how could we say the opposite of build momentum? Maybe we would say you lose steam or you slow down down. Okay. You know, as the rock is rolling, 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 maybe it keeps going, going, going for another 50 feet, 100 feet, and it starts to slow down. It starts to lose steam. We could also say it starts to lose momentum. Okay. It starts to lose that force, that drive, that power to keep going. In the text we saw, starting with small steps helps build momentum for bigger changes. Okay, so think about this. If you are studying English or doing anything, really, you are going about one of your hobbies. You're trying to turn into a habit, right? If you start with a big step, 
well, that's going to be a big barrier, right? It's going to be tough to get going, tough to get started, right? There's going to be immediately a big blockade to your progress, okay? You're not going to be able to build up speed. In fact, it's going to slow you down. So that's why it's important to start with a small step because you can do it easily, right? Once you accomplish that small step that helps build momentum, you think to yourself, hey, yeah, I can do this. Hey, wow, this is possible. You graduate, you move on from a small step to a medium step, and then maybe later on a medium step to a large step, right? But if we begin with a large step, then it's tough to get going, that's a good way of thinking about this. Get going. If we start with a large step or even a medium step, it's tough to get going, tough to get started and build steam, build speed. It's tough to build momentum, not easy to build momentum. If you guys are still with me, that's fantastic. Give yourself a pat on the back to congratulate yourself for making this investment in yourself, in your English, in your future. What we have next is the deep dive. Yeah, now that we've read the story quickly or the text quickly, I should say, now that we've had the vocabulary breakdown and understood some of the more challenging language, now we're going to go sentence by sentence and really squeeze every last educational juice drop that we can out of this text. Okay, so let's start with lesson one. Lesson one is make it obvious, okay? Obvious just means clear. It means easy to see, right? Um, if, you know, if a decision is an obvious decision, then it is clearly the right decision. It is obviously the correct thing to do. So creating clear cues for your habits makes them easier to adopt, Let's start with that. Okay. So remember that a cue, we talked about this, is like a reminder. Okay. It reminds you to do something. So if you create obvious or clear uh, reminders for your habits, well, that will make them easier to adopt. Ooh, here's a hard word. Adopt. That just means start doing. If you adopt a new habit. No, it's a little different than adopting a child, adopting a pet, right? This is a different interpretation, a different understanding of this word. If you adopt a new habit, then we could also say take on. You take on a new habit. You start doing a new habit. So by designing your environment to promote positive behaviors, you increase the likelihood of sticking to new habits, okay? So we need to design our environment, okay? We need to change the place where we do what we're trying to do. We're talking about studying English in today's video, right? So the environment is talking about the place where you study English. Maybe that's at a school, maybe it's at home in your bedroom, but what this is saying is that you need to design it from the top down. You need to make decisions about how it is. Why? Well, to promote positive behaviors, okay? Promote just means in order to make these positive behaviors happen, to make them possible, to make you do these things, these positive things more easily, okay? So if you can do that, if you can change the area where you study, if you can change it in a way that makes you do these positive behaviors, or we could also say good habits, like studying English more often, well, what happens then? Then you increase the likelihood of sticking to new habits. Okay, let's take a look at that. If you can do this, if you can change your environment and make it 
conducive, ah, conducive um, to, to uh, learning English, to going about actually doing your hobby or your habit, right? Uh, uh, if you can do that, then it's going to increase the likelihood of sticking with it. What does that mean if you stick with something? That means you don't give up. If you stick to it, you don't give up. Maybe an example would be, yeah, I tried learning Japanese, but it was so hard, so I didn't stick with it. Or we could say, I didn't stick to it. I gave up, right? So if you can change your environment, if you can change the area where you study, then it's going to increase the likelihood, increase your chances of sticking to new habits, in our case, to learning English. An example of this is Sarah placed her English vocabulary flashcards on her desk. Why? To remind herself to review them every day. So yeah, I do think this is a really good idea. Maybe something you guys can incorporate or use in your own English studies. She basically just placed her flashcards somewhere very visible somewhere where they were easy to see, right? And that was her cue, her reminder to review them every day. Maybe you guys can try this. Remember that this book is all about making small changes. And if you keep making small changes, small adjustments to the way you study, well, the results will be very big, much bigger than you might have expected. Coming to lesson two, remember, it was make it attractive. Attractive just means appealing. It's something you want. If something is attractive, then you want it. Maybe a person is attractive or good looking. Maybe an offer is attractive. If you are offered, you know, a contract for a new job that's very attractive, then you really want to take that job. You really want to take that position, right? So habits are easier to adopt. Start doing and remember, whenever you guys see habits, we can think learn English. Learning English is easier to start doing when it is appealing, when it is attractive. Let's connect these two words when you actually want to do it. So pairing new habits with activities you enjoy can make them more enticing. Yeah, that just means the same thing. Appealing or attractive makes you want it, makes you want to do it. Okay, so Here's my personal example. I turn on Chinese subtitles when I watch YouTube videos to make studying fun. Yeah, this is actually something I do. You guys know that, you know, my study habit is Mandarin Chinese. I've been learning for 10 years. And luckily, I've reached the point where learning can just be entertainment. It can just be fun. So, you know, last year I read Harry Potter in Chinese and that was really fun. But something that I've been doing recently is just watching YouTube videos that I would have watched normally. But as I watch them, I read Chinese subtitles. There's a really useful feature on YouTube, uh, subtitle auto generation, where for lots and lots of foreign languages, you can turn on auto generated subtitles. Now, they're not perfect, but they're pretty darn good, honestly. And for my Chinese studies, that makes it really fun. I can just watch the videos I would have watched and I can learn Chinese as I do so. Maybe you guys can try that with English as well. Principle three or lesson three from the book was make it easy, okay? Simplifying habits. Simplifying means to simplify something is to make it easy, right? That reduces friction. We talked about friction. Friction is like resistance, okay? Basically, it makes it easier to do, makes it easier to start, makes it easier to maintain or keep doing, okay? Keep doing. Break down habits into small manageable steps to encourage consistency. So if you take learning English and you break it down into maybe we could say bite-sized pieces, 
okay? Bite-sized pieces. You're not going to choke on a bite-sized piece. You're going to be able to chew it and swallow it, no problem. So we need small steps. We need manageable steps. What does manageable mean? That means it's not going to, you know, get out of your control. It is under control, under control. It is able to be controlled, right? So, you know, what does this do if you're able to break down learning English into small baby steps? Well, that encourages consistency. That makes you stick with it. And consistency is like you keep going, you know, you have a routine, you maybe you do something every day at a certain time, that is consistency. Let's say you study English every day at exactly 5 o'clock p.m., right? That means you are really consistent with your studies. So, Basically, all this is to say that by making studying English easier for yourself, you are encouraging consistency. Being consistent is going to be way more possible. An example of this, Maria set a goal to learn just one new English word each day, making the task easy and manageable, right? So if you guys can set a goal of learning one new English word, you know, maybe that's too easy for you five new English words. Um, the key takeaway here, the key lesson is don't overdo it, right? Don't overdo it. Don't make it too hard. Don't try to learn 30 new words every day, right? That's going to be way too difficult. Make it bite-sized. Make it simple. Make it easy. That will be easier for you. That will be more manageable. You will be able to control that situation, and that will encourage consistency. You will be able to actually study more often. Lesson four, make it satisfying. I love this one. You need to reward yourself for completing, remember, habits. You can just think learning English, right? So when you learn English, you should reward yourself, okay? Why? Well, that reinforces positive behavior. What does that mean? Positive behavior, that just means good decisions, or good choices, we could say. If you reinforce good choices or you reinforce something, that just means you make it stronger. You make it tougher. You make it more resilient. Okay. You make it better, basically. Okay. Like if you reinforce good behavior, then you say, hey, that behavior was good. You did a good job. You know, here's a reward. Maybe it's, you know, some yummy food. Maybe you get to play your favorite video game for a while or do something you really like to do. Well, that reward will reinforce your habit, okay? If you are learning English, for example, and you you finish, you know, studying for 30 minutes and that was your goal, you can reward yourself with some ice cream. You really, really like ice cream that's very satisfying to you. And that satisfying reward, what does it do? It reinforces your positive habit or behavior. So immediate rewards or rewards that uh, you get right away. You get them right away, right? Those can motivate you to stick to your new habits. Those can, we could also say, inspire you. Could motivate you, they can inspire you, you know, they can fire you up. That's a, that's a, a very spoken English way of thinking about this. Fire you up right? If you're fired up to do something, that means you're really motivated. You're really inspired. So if you give yourself a reward immediately, as soon as you finish studying, bam, you get a reward. Well, that can motivate you to stick to your habit to keep going with learning English. 
an example. Tom treated himself to a favorite snack after completing his daily English reading practice. So once again, could be food, could be a TV show you like, a video game you like, do an activity you like to do, whatever it is, you need to combine studying with dopamine. <laughs> what is dopamine? Dopamine is the chemical that is released in your brain when you do something uh, that makes you feel good, right? So you click on that YouTube video you wanna watch. You get on Instagram, right? Uh, you do X or Y or Z activity that makes you feel good your brain releases dopamine. So if we can find a way to combine these things or put them together, then that will really help with our English studies. Lesson five, focus on systems, not goals. You know, after reading this book, and I did read this book, it's a very good book, by the way, and I encourage you guys to go out and actually read the book if you think it won't be too difficult for you. Uh, I think this is the most important lesson, the most important takeaway, so I'm going to put a star here. Focus on systems, not goals. So what does that mean? Well, building effective systems or a way of studying that's a good way of thinking about this word system, how you study, right? What is your method? What is your way? What is your technique that you study, right? So building an effective way of studying ensures or makes sure that you will have long-term success. Yeah, not just success right now, but success for a long time in the long term. Okay, instead of fixating, or we could say focusing, instead of focusing on the end goal, concentrate instead on the process and the habits that will lead to achieving your objectives. Okay, so basically what this is saying is uh, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, right? Here's destination. It's not about the place you're going. It's about the journey. It's about how you get there. And you hear this all the time when people are talking about life lessons, when people are giving advice, right? They say, don't focus on the destination. Uh, instead, focus on the journey. Enjoy the journey. And guys, I think this is especially important for learning English because guess what? You will never finish learning English. Your English will never be perfect. That will never ever happen in your entire life. My English is far from perfect. I make mistakes all the time. And some guys, sometimes you guys catch those mistakes, right? I try hard with my videos, but I'm not perfect, okay? So because your English will never be perfect, it's important to realize that and try to enjoy the journey. You need to accept. You need to accept that your English skills will never be 100% per, uh, perfect, right? It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's about how you get there. So really try to live in the now. Live in the now when you study, okay? Here's an example. Emma focused on practicing English for 20 minutes each day rather than or instead of aiming to become fluent in six months, okay? So instead of focusing on the goal of fluency, that's too big of a goal. It's too overwhelming. Instead, she broke it down into a smaller, more tangible, more bite-sized thing to do, something that was more possible. Okay, practice English for 20 minutes each day. Don't focus on the long term, focus on the short term. What can you do today, right? Not, will I be fluent in two years or 10 years? Don't worry about that. Focus on right here, right now. Lesson six was the two minute rule, right? So starting with a habit that takes only two minutes to complete or finish can help you overcome resistance and build momentum. Resistance, remember that word friction or difficulty, we could say, 
difficulty. So basically, this is telling us that if you start your study session, let's say you want to learn English, you want to study today, right? You want to study for an hour today. Well, how are you going to study? Beginning with something that only takes two minutes can help you uh, overcome the difficulty of starting to study. If you try to do something really hard right from the beginning when you start studying, it's going to feel intimidating, overwhelming, too difficult, and you're going to want to give up. You are not going to be able to build momentum. You are not going to be able to really get going. Okay, so if you start with something that you can do in two minutes, this rule encourages you to begin even the smallest version of the habit, okay? I think this is an awesome rule. When you guys go and study English, begin with something that you can start and finish in under two minutes. In other words, begin with a warm-up. Don't dive into a really hard part of the lesson right away. Start with a warm-up. That's why I begin my deep work videos with a quick read of the story, a quick read of the text, right? If we jumped directly into the deep dive, it would feel like too much. It would feel too overwhelming. So I think that's a pretty good example for me and my videos, but here's another one. David started his English writing practice by jotting down, jotting down, writing quickly, right? A two-minute journal entry each evening. Okay, so clearly David wants to start, you know, uh, writing more in English. He wants to improve his writing skills. Does he sit down each evening and dive into a big 2,000 word essay? No. He starts with the two minute rule. He starts by jotting down some ideas. Remember, jotting down just means writing down quickly. He jots down some ideas in his journal. It just takes him two minutes. That gets him warmed up. That gets the gears turning. That gets him ready to go. It helps build that momentum. Okay, principle seven, the last one. Here we go. Habit stacking. Here's a stack of boxes right here. You know, stacking something just means you're putting things on top of each other, right? So linking, or we can say connecting, connecting a new habit to an existing one helps create a routine, a routine, a habit, something you do consistently, right? I have a morning routine. I have certain things that I do every morning. I do them consistently, meaning I do them every day, right? So habit stacking leverages, ooh, big scary word, right? Just means uses, Habit stacking uses your current habits to establish new ones. So, you know, this word leverages, uses in your favor. To use something in a way that benefits you is to leverage it, right? I use my experience uh, with uh, learning Chinese and studying Chinese. I leverage that experience to help me come up with ideas for my YouTube channel videos, right? I leverage that experience. I use it in my favor. I use it to help me. Okay, so basically what this is saying is if we can connect learning English with a different habit, then that can help reinforce learning English. That can help us improve making English a consistent habit. Learning English can become more consistent if we attach it to a different habit, something we already do. Let's take a look at this example because I remember it's a really good one. Ready? Lisa decided to review her English vocabulary right after brushing her teeth each night. Bam. Now, that's just a random example, but I think that's actually a really good one. Do you see what Lisa is doing here? She is habit stacking. She's taking two unrelated habits and she's putting them together. She's combining them. Now, look, this is very smart because brushing your teeth every night, is that a very difficult habit for most people, a very challenging part of their routine? 
No, it's totally mindless, totally brainless. It's something you are going to do without any friction, without any resistance, right? It's going to be easy to brush your teeth every night. So why not use that in your favor? Why not leverage that? You can use these easy habits that you don't even think about to make your difficult habits easier. So if you combine brushing your teeth, uh, something that's very easy for you to do with learning English, something that's very hard for you to do, well, maybe that balances out a little bit. Maybe some of that easiness from brushing your teeth will wash off on learning English, right? You know, it's basically telling us that this will make learning English uh, 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 fit into the routine much more easily because you're combining it with something easy that already exists. I think you guys can consider doing something like this, incorporating this into your English studies. I think something like this would help a lot. If you are still with me, wow, a big round of applause for you. You're doing fantastic. Now we're going to move on to my favorite part of my lessons, the discussion question for speaking practice. Yes, we are going to practice talking out loud. Let me explain how. Well, we're going to pick one of the atomic habits, uh, pick one of the lessons that we mentioned in this video, that we talked about in this video. We're going to talk about how you could utilize it or to use one of those new words how could we leverage it? How could we use it in our favor? In other words, use it to help us in order to study English more effectively, to study English better, okay? In a way that makes more sense. So I want you to, if you need to, go back through those seven different lessons and pick one that you think you could actually do, something you could actually apply to your language studies, and you're going to talk out loud about it for one minute. Now, I'm going to go first to give you an example to give you guys a demonstration of what I want you to try and do. So here's my full minute. Here I go. Yeah, so after taking a look at all of these seven different lessons from this book, you know, this book called Atomic Habits by this writer named James Clear, there's a lot of fantastic information in this book. You know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, a lot of ways we can improve our English studies, right? For me, you know, I'm studying Chinese. I think something I want to try, which was one of the lessons talked about in today's video, was habit stacking. Habit stacking. I think that was so smart. And I think what I could do is try and stack learning Chinese with exercise. I exercise every day in the morning. That's my active time, my workout time. Maybe I could stack Chinese onto that. And that way I can have a super productive morning, get everything finished right at the beginning of my day. Whew. Okay. That was my one minute. Now it's your turn. Go ahead. Knock it out of the park. Guys, if you are in the middle of a deep work study session, don't stop studying now. I'm going to put another one of my videos up on the screen. 
go click on it and I will meet you there. Let's keep this study session going. Let's go.